Hi and welcome to another of the DTA screencasts. Today we're going to be looking at acquiring movement skills and principally Schmidt's schema theory. So let's get started. So in essence a schema is a generalized series of movement patterns which are modified depending on the situation and environment. Now this is very, very different to Adams's loop control because schema is based on the idea that motor programs are not stored as separate items but they're presented uh, as presented by the open loop theory. Instead they're retained in long-term memory as relationships with motor programs. These relationships are termed generalized movements and they allow the performer to adapt quickly in response to a situation. So for Adams's loop control he would suggest that we have a motor program for this specific skill and a motor program for this specific skill whereas for the schema theory there is a generalized series of movements so let's take a look at this first one here he Adams would suggest that there would be a motor program for uh, playing the shot at the back of the court the front of the court and the middle of the court and same principally if we were serving from this position further back or even further still however lies however for the schema theory we're looking at a generalized scheme that can be adapted for each position on the court that's just an example so we're going to look at that in a little bit more detail <clears throat> so the generalized series of movements so in these three pictures here you could probably suggest there is a general scheme of the motor program which would be throwing over arm so in the first picture a relatively simplistic form of throwing here a more complex one would be bowling and then here to a certain extent here you could say would be the smash or the overhead clear but the general scheme where all of these three things would have started from would have been throwing over arm So if we come into contact with something that we recognize, the schema or the stored information and experience will allow us to learn and adapt our previous skill a lot, lot better. And there's a little exercise we're going to do to try and prove that fact. So what I want you to do is try and remember as much as you can and try and identify what I'm actually talking about within this passage. Now I predict that you're going to fail at this task as you have no schema. You have no stored information or experience of what I'm talking about. Afterwards I'll give you a schema and by giving you the schema I will hopefully improve your understanding and your recognition of what I'm actually talking about. Okay. Okay, firstly you need to arrange the items into piles and you can decide on what categories you choose. You may need to go to another facility if you don't have the adequate materials uh, at your disposal and if that's the case there may be some financial implication. You can process the materials in relatively small items or in large sections. If you do more rather than less there may be complications at a slightly later stage once this process is complete the items can be arranged into categories once again and then at a later date this process will have to be repeated but this is just one of those things okay so what I'm going to do now is give you a schema to hopefully help you understand what I was actually talking about. So the passage was about washing clothes. And here is the passage. So if you went through the passage again, knowing full well what the schema is, that it's about washing clothes, then you would have a greater understanding or, and you'd be able to retain what it is simply because you have now an experience, a prior experience, and you're able to recall that schema from your long-term memory 
and therefore understand exactly what this passage is. So you have a schema for this, so now you can actually recognize it. So let's put that into a, sport, uh, a different context. So prior knowledge affects the ability to learn and remember new motor skills. So let's put that into a sporting context. <coughs> so we have this guy here who is about to perform a smash. So he has a motor program of a smash already. So there is our prior knowledge. And what he doesn't have, though, is a motor program for every different position on the court. As Adams would suggest, you need a single motor program, um, whereas the schema theory is suggesting that because he has an experience of how to perform the smash, he can draw down that experience from his long-term memory and transfer that into this new situation. So prior knowledge, allowing him to then learn or perform a new motor skill. So how do we actually develop these schemas, these experiences? There are four different sections to it, broken down into two different areas. So there's the recall schema and the recognition schema. The recall schema is performed before the movement takes place. And these are broken down to into initial conditions, response specifications. The recognition schema, uh, as clearly stated there, is after the movement. And these are our sensory consequences and response consequences. So the key thing to highlight there is before and after the movement. So have a look at these in more detail. So recall schema is prior to the motor skill actually being produced and we're looking at the initial conditions. So what would that be? This player in possession needs to identify has he previously experienced this before or has he been in a similar situation before? So running towards uh, an opposing player having these players uh, this particular distance away. So if he's been in a similar situation, he can draw down that schema from his long-term memory and then hopefully uh, produce uh, an effective motor program. Other things that you can take into consideration may be weather. So all of these things occur before the movement takes place. Have I experienced this before or something similar? The response specification, which is the next stage that occurs, is asking, have I got knowledge of the response? Do I know what I'm supposed to do in this chosen situation? So here we have this player. He's come into this situation. He's recognized that he's been here before. But does he know what to actually do? So how hard do I need to pass the ball to the player on the outside? Or... How hard do I need to step off my foot to run through this gap here for, for it to be successful? And these are the things that are occurring before the movement takes place. And this is our response. What responses are there available? So the next stage uh, is again broken down into two sections. and We have the knowledge of sensory consequence and knowledge of movement outcome. And both of these occur after the movement, during and after the movement. So knowledge of sensory consequence is kinesthesis, how the skill should actually feel. So in this picture here, we've got someone playing ARL. How high should he actually jump and how should that feel? Giving us that kinesthesis will allow us to know whether we're performing the skill suitably or not. We also have knowledge of movement outcome. In other words, what will the outcome look like? So we've got big Sonny Bill Williams here coming through a gap and he's got to work out if I step through the gap uh, will I be able to get through? So what will the outcome be if I actually break through? Or if he chosen to pass instead? What would be the outcome if I actually pass? So knowing what the outcome will be, you should be able to identify whether you achieve it or not based, uh, based on the, the outcome, clearly. So 
what this allows us to do then is develop and adapt the schema that we have for that particular situation. So by knowing what it feels like, we can store that away, and by knowing what the outcome should be and that we actually achieve, breaking through the gap here, then we are able to adapt the schema that we have for that particular motor program or that generalized movement. That, in essence, gives us our new schema to move us forward with our motor programs.